So today's question comes from Christian Washington on Facebook. And her question says, I'm currently paper trading options through Thinkorswim. Do you think you could host a class on beta weighting portfolio balance? So hey, Christian, thanks for your question. If you have a question on Facebook or on Instagram, be sure to hit us up in the DMs or a comment under one of our what would you like to learn about posts. So first, let's talk about what is beta weighting. Okay, so first, let's talk about what is beta, baby? Beta is what the S&P 500 is the benchmark used against. So S&P has a beta of one. And I wanna explain that to you by giving you a counter example. So if the S&P 500 has a beta of one, which is the benchmark of how fast or slow a stock should rise or fall, then let's take a stock like Apple. Apple may have a beta of five, for example. So if the stock market moves $1, it is believed that Apple would move at least $5, right? Because it has a beta of five and that beta is compared to the overall market, which is the S&P 500. So when you think about beta weighting a portfolio, this more so falls into the lap of a portfolio manager, although you can do it as an individual what we primarily teach is to find specific stocks that are moving at the current time or that we believe are going to move in the near future and then use the options to power trade it or to get a higher percent return versus buying the actual stock. But there are times where you may want to construct a portfolio and that the beta may matter to you. So for example, if you are a person that doesn't like a lot of risk and so the S&P 500 has a beta of one, you may construct a portfolio that has utilities, gas, electricity, electricity, some dividend paying stocks, some things like that that may have a beta of 0.5. So that way, if the market moves up $3, your portfolio will only move up $1.50. It's less risky. So you may not get as big of a return, but maybe you're doing that because you're counting on the dividend and different things like that. Or maybe you're in your older years and you don't need a big return. You need more of a consistent return, but you also don't want to have a heart attack when the market falls. So if the market falls $10 and you have a beta weighted portfolio of 0.5, which means it should fall half as much as the S&P 500. Now, this is all in theory and theoretical models, but this is why you would take certain stocks out, put certain stocks in so that you keep a certain balance or weight of 0.5, or in case a stock starts to take off a little bit faster, become a little bit more volatile, you might remove that stock from your portfolio because the beta has changed. It's no longer 0.5. Maybe it's a 2x beta, which means it's moving two times the speed of the overall market. The other thing you could do is have a positive beta stock and a negative beta stock so that they offset each other. So if you have a stock that has a two beta and a stock that has a negative two beta, they might cancel each other out. So your portfolio kind of stays neutral no matter what the stock market is doing because if the market's up to, you have two stocks, one that moves up two bucks, but one that falls $2. So they kind of wash each other out. Again, you may do that because you're collecting a dividend and you just kind of want the account to stabilize and be neutral. So those are a few ways that you can use beta, especially with respect to constructing a portfolio and how it relates to the overall market and why you may want a higher beta or maybe a lower beta portfolio. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. Leave a comment down below in the comment section if you have any questions and I'll see you on the next video.